Jenny. I'm a software developer at the Government Digital Service and I work on gov.uk, which is the government's main website. It launched in October 2012. We're celebrating its fourth birthday next week and there will be cake. And I'm going to explain how we built GovUK and closed lots of old government websites without breaking their URLs, the links between pages which make up the web. When GovUK launched, it replaced two earlier central government websites, DirectGov, the orange one, and BusinessLink, the blue one. But GovUK had been available online for some time before it went live in beta, and on launch night, what actually changed was that those two old sites were redirected to GovUK, making it the single place to find that information. We redirected each individual page on the old sites to the most relevant new page on the new site. This is the change to remove the beta messages from the site on launch day. Our code is hosted publicly on github.com and lots of people commented on this change, including many from outside GDS. And as you can see, they were quite excited. Uh, people don't usually get excited about government websites. So what's different about gov.uk? <laughs> well, I'm just gonna wait. Um, we have a relentless focus on user needs. We aim to provide information to be as helpful as possible to you, rather than in the way that suits government departments. Also, all of our code is public, so that anyone can see what we're working on, um, how it all works together, they can submit a fix if they find a bug, and also they can celebrate with us, which is quite fun. And also, we work in an agile way. That means that we build a small thing, we test it with some users, uh, we see what works, and then we improve it, or we get rid of it if we find out that it's not the right thing to do. And then we repeat that process as we're going. And we do that instead of designing a big system up front, then going away and spending years building it, uh, which will cost millions of pounds. And like, we don't really know until the end whether or not it's worked. It probably hasn't worked. And it's probably isn't what people actually need. So um, instead, uh, we um, are words. Um, like this agile approach that we use was pretty unusual in government IT. So there were lots of people in the world who were excited to see us doing that. So we built the new website and we redirected DirectGov and BusinessLink to it. Then over the next few months, the then 24 main government departments also moved on to GovUK and we redirected their old sites. So that instead of having many different websites all organized in different ways, every department started publishing on GovUK instead, because users shouldn't have to understand the internal structure of government to interact with it or to find information. Over the following 18 months, more than 300 government organizations moved their publishing onto GovUK and their sites were redirected. We call this process transition. Um, it's government organizations moving their publishing onto gov.uk and then redirecting their old sites to the new content. But new content was written for GovUK to better meet users' needs, so the information that people needed was still available online, so why not just turn the old sites off and forget about them? Like, why bother redirecting them at all? Well, there are links to all of those old sites in search engines. On other websites around the web, charities and other organizations often link to government websites, and we shouldn't break those links. There are also URLs printed on mugs. <laughs> other promotional materials? Um, and on pre-printed stationery on the back of an envelope or on letters or leaflets. And these kinds of printed URLs have to stay working for a long time because people keep paperwork and they trust it and expect it to be authoritative and correct. We want to make sure that users don't get to a page like this when they type in one of those URLs or click on a link from another website. This kind of page is a dead end. There are no links. There's nothing to help you find what you were looking for. People interact with government out of necessity, not choice, often at difficult times in their lives, in challenging situations. And there are real consequences for people if our content is out of date or unavailable. And we need to make sure that users can still get to the information that they need wherever they're coming from, as well as being good web citizens by maintaining working links, because the integrity of the web is important to us. So what do we do? GovUK's developers built tools to handle the traffic to hundreds of transitioned websites and to define where to redirect each URL to. The first system that we used to redirect the old sites was built really, really quickly just before GovUK launched. And it got the job done, but it relied on our developers doing a lot of the work and it wasn't easy to manage, um, especially when you started to transition more than just those first few sites. It really felt like redirecting with your bare hands. 
And we also learn from those first transitions that the people who know the content and the subject area best should make the decisions about mapping, where to redirect each URL to. And that's people in departments, not developers on GovUK. We're not the subject experts. So you need to understand why users will be going to all of those old pages and you need to know the new content to decide how to match them up. It's not an exact science. It needs some human attention and it can't all be automated. So the team that I was on built some new tools to make it easier for people across government to manage their transitioning sites and all those redirects. This is the transition tool which we built. People who work in government departments and agencies log into this to manage their websites and define where those individual URLs will redirect to. So this is what the main page for searching and editing those mappings looks like. And if you click on the edit button on the right there, you get to a page like this, which lets you change where people will be redirected to when they visit this URL after the site has transitioned. The people using this tool don't have a technical background, so we needed to make it easy for them uh, to use it without having to understand all the technical details of how the web works. Even though this tool is effectively controlling how parts of the internet work, we had to understand their needs in order to make something that they could use. So we tested the new tool with our users throughout the process of building it. We would sit someone down and get them to use it and observe them and ask them questions to find out how they understood what was happening. And that gave us really tight feedback loops so that we could improve the tool quickly by adding exactly the functionality that they needed to do their jobs and no more to keep it simple. After a site transitions, our tools are handling all of the traffic that comes to it. And so we have access to lots of data about which pages people are still trying to visit. And we can present that data in the transition tool to help those users create and maintain mappings. These analytics pages are a crucial part of the transition tool. They enable our users to make decisions based on data by highlighting the URLs that they've missed so they can add redirects for them. The graph at the top of the page gives an overview and then there's detailed data for each URL in the tables below. This table shows requests for URLs that we didn't know about before the site transitioned, and so their behavior hadn't been defined, and so people got an error. And we show in the table that the error has been fixed when a redirect has been set up for it. And you can do that using the button on the right, representing this data to our users so that, that you can act on it and fix things. This graph shows like, more than three years of data for a single site. You might expect that after a site transitions and effectively goes away, people would stop trying to visit it pretty quickly and just go to the new site instead. But actually, the traffic doesn't really go down very much over time. There are still about 40,000 requests a day just for this one site, even a long time after it's transitioned. So it's important that we keep all of these URLs working for years to come. This graph is for a different site covering just five days starting on the day that the site transitioned. And that pink line for errors at the bottom of the graph goes up a bit on the day after the transition. Um, that was 100,000 requests for one URL, which hadn't had a redirect set up for it in one day. But then we showed this data in the app and the users for that site could see that and fix it straight away. So they put in a redirect and that pink line goes straight back down to the bottom by the next day. That one URL was where information about medicines which need to be recalled used to be published. And it's really important that we redirect that to its new home on GovUK where that information is published now so that doctors can still get the information quickly to be able to protect their patients. And presenting this data enables our users to do that better. So what do you see when you visit URLs on old sites after transition? Well, there are three possibilities. Uh, most requests are redirected. The most popular pages are all redirected. So if you visit this long DirectGov URL now, instead of seeing this old DirectGov page, we'll redirect you to this page on gov.uk where the relevant information is all laid out clearly. The redirect is a seamless experience for users. They might not even notice it's happening. We're just getting people to the best place to find that information now. There were also pages like this on old government websites. This is a press release from 2010. No one ever looks at these. There was no user need for moving it to GovUK. And so that page has been archived. And so now you get this page instead when you visit that URL. But these archive pages aren't just a dead end. There are links to GovUK, the department's page, a contact form. And if you click on that first link to the web archive, then you'll see that the original content has been preserved by the National Archives. It hasn't completely disappeared from the web. You can still find it there if you really need to. This is an example of our 404 page. You get this if you visit a URL that we don't know about, but these links are pretty similar still to the ones that you'll get on the archive page, and requests like this will show up in those graphs so they can be fixed. So the largest phase of transition finished nearly two years ago, so where are we at now? 
Well, we've got hundreds of users across government using the transition tool to manage hundreds of websites. And our tools are still serving about 3 million requests a day across all of those transition sites. It turns out that government doesn't really know how many old websites it still has, but they do want to use our tools to redirect them when they find them down the back of the sofa. So we're looking now at all of the other government websites and online tools that we can find to decide which of those we can also move on to GovUK. Transition isn't finished yet. Thanks.